Dan, go ahead. Hi, Danny. Hi, Owen. You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. Great stuff. Um, Owen, I think if I can, the first thing to sort of to ask is just as professional cricketers, professional sportsmen, just how important is it to be playing international cricket right now? I think it's huge. I mentioned it during the summer. I think as a, a sportsman or even an international sportsman or sports person, um, there are very few times that you play sport or, or, or contribute to things when people actually really need it. And I went through this experience myself towards the back end of our first lockdown period when sport just started to be reintegrated in, into people's TVs at home. And the, the smile I put on my face, the smile I put on, on, on you know, the, certainly the community that I live in was outstanding. And I think given the circumstances, how, how bad they still are, um, probably particularly at home, it's, it's important for us to go out there and hopefully put on a bit of a show because it, it certainly, a lot of people around the world are going through different challenges at this moment in time, but certainly sport can help relieve that a little bit. I know in terms of this time around, you know, we're well used to COVID bubbles in sport, but also cricket had a particular, um, sort of particular way of doing it. What, how's it working out in South Africa for you? We understand the South Africans are in almost in two separate camps. How, how are you finding the sort of the COVID um, uh, sort of integration or lack of it is working for you? Yeah, I think it always presents different challenges. I think different countries prepare in different ways. I think during the summer we did a magnificent job in, uh, I suppose, not having any cases at all. We felt in a very privileged position not, not to have to worry about the virus um, in our bubble. And I suppose this has presented different challenges. South Africa had two cases, one was off site, one was on site in a hotel, um, which presented a, a different challenge. And I suppose very similarly in the summer, if we had a case, we needed to be able to demonstrate that we could contain it uh, to make every team and every player within that bubble secure and safe. And South Africa have, have seemed to do that so far. Oh, and another thing that obviously happened over the summer as well, not apart from COVID, so, so much was um, influenced by obviously the matters around George Floyd and, and, and the Black Lives Matter. How challenging was it a decision not to take the knee this time around? Obviously in conjunction with South Africa, but can you explain some of the decision making and sort of the conversations you've had around with, with South Africa with that one? Because it's a, it's a very, very difficult subject matter uh, to, to, to get appropriately right for, for many people. Yeah, certainly uh, from our side of things, towards the end of the summer, I mean, from, I suppose from the beginning right through till the end, as a team, as a squad, across all three formats, we spoke uh, about how we can create meaningful change uh, over a period of time that, that's extremely authentic to every player and staff member within our group to make it feel like we have a share in it. Because when we put our weight behind something or our voice behind it, we feel that it's extremely powerful. Now, over the course of the summer and, and since then, we've had continuous chats both with ECB and, and outside charities and, and communities to try and find where we're best placed to try and be as effective as we can, to try and you know, um, create more sort of inclusion within society and, and how, how cricket can affect that. And us as cricketers, how, where we stand. And I think every player has a different story, particularly within our group, given how diverse it is. Uh, and they want that their own story to, to be replicated um, in how we feel that we can affect or impact um, the world in a, in a really strong way. So our piece is a bit more of a work in progress. It, it is making a lot of progress at the moment and I don't think we're far away from doing something. Um, obviously the South Africans' decision to, to do that as well um, and actually 
while I was at the IPL speaking to other teams who were doing similar things in their own countries, um, particularly Australia, um, connect, reconnecting with the Aboriginal community uh, is something that they feel is, is at the forefront. It's nice to see. Yeah. Uh, oh, just a, a couple of quick questions, if I may, on, on the cricket it's, it, it, itself. Um, enough practice. You know, we, we, we saw the, 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 the practice match between, you know, Team Morgan, Team Butler. I know you explained why these, it's just important these matches are happening, but have you had enough practice of, of, of batsmen, bowlers, fielders? Are you in, in the right place for, for an international fixture? Yeah, we are. Um, we've had a lot of guys come down from, from the IPL that had enough time at home or they holidayed um, wherever it might have been. Um, so guys feel uh, both rested and ready to go, but also guys who have had a prolonged rest are also very keen to get going. So I think given... That's tough. I know we're back. No, you're back. Um, you're back. Yeah. Um, given uh, that, that white ball series, the preparation is always quite, quite short and sharp. We feel as if we've been best placed, really. Uh, we have enough players here to play an extremely competitive two warm up games, um, where on paper the sides are, are extremely strong. Um, but I think guys are as prepared, best prepared as they could be. Uh, just a final question for me, just in terms of the strength of the South African. We, we know the confidence the, you, you have in, in your ability and your players' abilities. Just in terms of the test you expect from South Africa, you know, what do you expect from the series? You know, both both T Twenty and the ODI. Yeah, I think extremely competitive series. It's not that long ago since we we were down here and again drawing the ODI series and just narrowly winning the T Twenty series. I think all the, everything points towards an, an extremely competitive, well fought series. Owen, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. My Wi-Fi has gone down, but I'm going to hand, hand over to, um, to Dean Wilson to ask the next question. I think it's working. Is, is it all still coming through? Okay. Yeah, Coming cool. through my Dean. end. Go ahead, Dean. Uh, thanks, Danny. Uh, hi, Owen. Um, have you got a team for us uh, for tomorrow? No team, I'm afraid, Dean. What, uh, what's the delay on that? What, what, are you, what are you mulling over before the game? What's the, the choices you've got to make? Oh, it's yeah, the balance of the side. Um, if the wicket will change overnight, the weather is set fair. It's sunny outside at the moment. It's due to be very similar tomorrow. Uh, I want to wait and see if he takes more grass off the wicket. Um, as there's only one wicket prepared out here, we're probably going to be on the same wicket in, in the third game. So I don't know if he's leaving grass on with that in, in, in view or if. If it gets hotter or windier, is he going to cover it? We'll have to wait. Um, in your mind, do you know what your best T20 team is at the moment? Obviously, there's been a lot of players who've been rested over the last few years um, due to the priority of 50 over cricket. Now, T20 seems to be the central uh, white ball game. Do you know what your best team is? And uh, do you anticipate that this series will kind of clear that up in, in your mind? Um, I don't think it will clear it up. I don't. The honest answer is we don't know our best 11 yet. Um, there are probably seven, eight guys who are pretty strong candidates to be in our, in our playing them. But I think the strength of the, the squad that we've selected, the reserves that we have here, and given it's the first time in a long time we've had our full strength available side um, for selection, it makes it really exciting. Uh, ben was missing in the summer. Um, but I think playing against Australia, given the side that we did, was, was very strong, but Ben obviously adds a huge amount to that as well. Um, but no is the answer. I don't know our best 11. And just a final one for me. You said that you want to put on a show that it's important for sport on TV to, to do that. Uh, are you pretty excited about the number of entertainers that you've got in your team? Yeah, yeah. Training here the last couple of days has been very exciting, but also very dangerous. I mean, you look down the order of potential 11s that we could put out, and sometimes all 11 can hit sixes, sometimes it's only the top 10, but you look at the batting order. Very, very exciting. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with Jonathan Agnew, please.
Thank you. Morning, Owen, and morning, everybody. I hope you're all uh, fit and well. Um, oh, and just one, we're obviously very excited now about um, the vaccine and so on. Is, is there, uh, have you got in your mind this could be the last of these? I mean, I'm not, no one's too sure about what the pictures might be over the coming weeks and months, but could this be the last time, do you think, that you do have to actually go through this bubbling and no crowds and so on? And, and if so, what do you think about that? No, I don't, I don't no, think it is. I don't think it is. And given, obviously, the, the news about the vaccine, it's, it's going to be a considerable amount of time before actually the, the people who need it get it. And then actually, you know, there are certain circumstances which determine whether you, whether you actually need it or not. Just because it's available to you doesn't necessarily mean that you should have it or take it. And I think we're in, we're in that position. I think we're well down the pecking order of, of people that should be prioritized or certainly within the first six months um, be looked at in, in, in getting it. Um, so I, I don't see this changing, certainly before the start of our summer, um, but, but potentially for our summer. Okay, thanks. Good luck. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, I guess. Thanks. thanks okay, guess. John Etheridge. Morning, Owen. Hi. Uh, you said that um, practice sessions are quite dangerous. Can you explain why that is? Is it because the balls are just flying everywhere? Yeah, well, um, so our training the last two days have been obviously brilliant. Just to, I don't know if you guys have seen pictures, but we have open nets on the square here at Newlands that have no roof up on the net. So guys are trying to hit it into stand pretty much every second ball. And the nets have been pointed towards the changing room of the dugout where a lot of our stuff is. So it's been dangerous. Uh, are the guys warned to sort of keep their eyes open pretty much all the time? All the time. Absolutely all the time. And whose job is it, is it to go and get the balls? Uh, I think we, we guys just take turns. If you come out of the net, normally guys stand at the end of the um, boundary to pick them up. Some of the support staff, if they're not doing anything, um, help out. But I think everybody does. Yeah, and just on the, on the sort of the power skill in, in the batting unit, Jason Roy yesterday described it as frightening. Is that one of your trickiest decisions, really, how to fit all the guys in, or as many of the guys in as possible, and in what order as well? I think to start with, you need to try and figure out what your, top, your, your best six or seven batsmen are. And then the, the challenge within that is getting them in roles where that best suits them and best suits the team, but also gives you the best chance of winning the game. So, so those, are, those are the challenges. Will it be Joss and Jason are open tomorrow, for example? Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay, we're going to go with Rory, and then we'll take a couple more. Ali Martin after that. Hi, Owen. Um, Jofra has only played four T20s for England because of the various, you know, needing needing rest and stuff for other formats. But clearly, it's the format that he's had the most experience in in his career. And if we look at the IPL, winning the MVP award, it's a format that he's an absolute. He's really got his game together on that. I just wonder how exciting for you now, knowing over the next year. In T20 cricket, you're going to probably have Jofra, and, and how much that improves your your T20 team? Yeah, it, 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 I mean, he's, he's one of the best in the world. He's just coming back off the MVP in, in the IPL, so he's he's incredible to have around. Um, I, don't, I don't think we'll have him that often in between now and the World Cup. I think certainly one of the series that are going to be more relevant to to, to have a as close to full strength as possible is going to be India, if it is in India. Um, obviously trying to replicate the, the World Cup, but the, the challenge of him trying to commit to all, even if you said play all of the tests and all of the, the T20s, I think that's too much of a challenge for guys playing all three formats at the moment, given that we don't know circumstances around getting in and out of bubbles or getting home or getting family on tour with you it just creates a, a different challenge so one of our challenges is, is just trying to get him into a headspace where he's enjoying his cricket while he's with us um, and trying to make the most of the opportunity while he's with us okay we'll go with Ali and then we'll finish with Will McPherson 
Hi, Owen. Uh, good to see you. I'm just wondering, is one of the decisions you've got to make around the number seven position, and I guess coming into that would be Sam Curran or Moeen Ali, how much of a factor is past success, which Moeen has, or future challenges such as the World T20 in India, where you might need the extra spinner, but then how much of it is down to form, which probably Sam probably has the edge on here, and possibly conditions as well, if, if there is grass left on the wicket? Yeah, I, th I think all of the above, Ali. I think you know, we're, we're playing our what we think is our best 11 to, to beat South Africa here and now. I also think looking ahead to the World Cup, we will need uh, the option of two spinners, but also if we have the luxury of uh, two all-rounders in, in, in a side in, in Ben and Sam, that's huge. In coming off the back of the IPL, Sam has certainly grown in confidence, probably even more so with the bat than the ball. Uh, but he, he was certainly thrown in in all sorts of circumstances and had all sorts of challenges, but came out the other side glowing, which is great and, and obviously very difficult to do on a side that really didn't compete at all over there. So he's grown a huge amount in, in confidence, but certainly when it comes to selection, we'll be selected based on, on who we think is best to win this. Thanks. And uh, Will McPherson. Hi, Owen. Um, in, in terms of lessons learned from the 2015 to 19 ODI project, um, this is obviously a shorter period, but how, how important do you think um, sort of a winning habit is building up towards a big tournament, or is it at this stage a little bit about just learning if you don't win this series, but you do learn sort of about certain positions and what get closer to learning your best side. Is that equally important? How do you see that balance? Yeah, I actually think I'd, I'd probably say it's, it's more important. Um, I think winning at the moment it would be great, but for us, given the, the, the luxury and players that we have at our disposal, it's more important that we get their roles right and they feel comfortable within that. Because I think if we manage to solve that problem, the results will look after itself. So the process of going through what's best for our team um, and best for our players to try and beat the opposition um, is, is extremely important. Okay, we're done. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks.